everybody, welcome back to Painting Big. This is Anne, and I realized on this mini painting fundamentals uh, series that I was uh, putting the cart before the horse a bit. So we're gonna take a break and we're gonna cover my top five tips. If you're a brand new painter, top five tips to try to reduce the frustration level that you have with the hobby and let you enjoy it a little bit more. All right, let's get to it. Holders. All right, so let's let's talk about this. So this is this is elementary stuff. Yes, for those of you who are uh, more than newbies, then you know, bear with me. But let's talk about holders. Putting your mini on a holder. Why would you do it? And these are super cheapo holders too. So the main reason to put your model on a holder is so that you don't have to actually handle the model itself while you're painting it. If you try to paint this mini and you're always handling it and your fingers are all over it and you're bracing your finger on top of its hat or its head, you're gonna rub paint off, right? So essentially we use holders. There are many companies that will sell you a holder. And I think I have actually done a video on holders a long time ago. Um, under, I think it was the original like tiny tips video. It might come up now as like episode zero of this. It was from a while ago, but anyway, there are all sorts of holders, but the easiest ones to deal with are just something that you can put sticky tack on top of, which is pretty much blue tack, poster putty, mounting putty, any of those names, silly putty might even work. Something that you can put the sticky tack on top of to keep your model kind of glued down. And when you are done with the model, it is pretty easy to twist the model and get it right up off of there. Pretty pristine. And if you have a little threads of it left, you just use it, kind of dab it against its big blob and it'll take those right off. So I like this because it's reusable, it's recyclable. The wood block is substantial enough for plastic models to make them hard to knock over. So, I use this even for big models. I just graduate up to a bigger block, as you can see, and I even have bigger blocks than this <laughs> for the really big bus. But same thing, there is a blob of poster putty you can see right there holding this guy on. And it's a testament. Now, it's a testament to how strong that poster putty is that this big old chunk of plastic guy is still standing on here, right? Poster putties do not all come created equal. That Some of them are more goopy and sticky and some of them are more stiff and not as sticky. And usually I end up mixing them to get kind of a, a, a stickiness factor that I like. So you can kind of mess around with it that way. But no matter what you do, you wanna be able to have something on a holder. Not only does it keep you from handling the model, but it also makes it really easy to just turn it around if you need to like get at a different angle on something like eyeballs. It just makes it a lot easier to not have to handle the mini while you're painting it. Okay, second, let's talk about lighting. And actually, let me get some unprimed minis to show you here. So I have two light sources here. One is to my right and one is to my left. And I've done this for a very, very long time. Um, and the reason I do it is take a look at this model. When you're painting it, you aren't seeing any big like blocks of shadow. Whereas if I turn this off, look at that hard shadow that comes over here all of a sudden. You, you can't see everything quite as well. Um, a bunch of things get darker. Uh, my room just got darker. <laughs> so let me bring my, my left lamp back. And now I can see everything really nicely and there's no really deep shadows. So that's why having a light on either side of you is a good idea. I use a brand called Tautronics, T-A-O-T-R-O-N-I-C-S. And no, I'm not getting an affiliate sponsorship with them. I just really like their lights. They're relatively inexpensive. It's an L-shaped light with an LED bar. You can alter the colors and the intensity of it. And because they're LED, they're gonna last you for a long time. And because they're relatively inexpensive, it's easier to get two of them. So I used to put one on either side of me while I was painting. What you will find is, especially if you suffer from eye strain, the more light you have, the better. And a lot of people I see reach for heavy magnification before they correct their lighting setup. And I think that's kind of in the wrong order. <laughs> In my experience, I avoided eye strain much better when I switched my lighting setup and got more light on my minis. And then afterwards, when my eyes started to cronk out, then I added the reading glasses, right? But if you just add light, that can solve so many things. All right, let's talk a tiny bit about brushes. 
We're gonna move fast through this video because I know you guys like that I keep it short. So I could go on and on and on about brushes, but suffice to say the most important quality that your brush can have, no matter what it is, is that it keeps a good tip. Now these are all high-end sable brushes called Kalinsky Sable, which is pretty much a word for the top two grades of red sable. Now some of them you might think, oh, that's not a good brush. It doesn't keep a good point. But what you really want is to get it wet. If you get your brush wet and you look at it, that's when you're gonna see it come to a beautiful point. So don't judge a brush just because it's all fluffed out. Get some water on it and see what it does there. Now you can also see there's a whole bunch of different shapes represented here, right? Different brush shapes. Let's talk about that really briefly. All of these brushes are perfectly serviceable for using while painting, although I'm, I'm less a fan of the, the really thick one here, but that's just me. So as you can see, they all come to beautiful, beautiful points. And most of these are what is called a round. If you look at the shape of a brush, they'll say round. Now this is a full bodied round. It means it's got a really big, thick belly here and it comes to a point, but it narrows very suddenly. Whereas over here, you can see a pointed round See how long that taper is there. So brushes come in a lot of different, this is more of a miniature style brush, this little wedge shaped one here. And if you like to push your paint around on your model, like you tend to use a sideways brush stroke like this, that's when these brushes can be good. If you have that habit or that's something you gravitate toward as you paint, um, consider going with more of a wedge shaped brush. This is an Escoda Optimo uh, Kalinsky from Spain. Uh, the other brands, the brands I use more often are the Da Vinci Maestro um, a Kalinsky. You can see that right on the barrel. Whenever you've got a, a, a Kalinsky brush, it's, it usually says that on the barrel. And then I've got Raphael from France and that also says Kalinsky. This is the huge one. I use this for, uh, for bust painting, for, for moving fast. Um, but these two brushes are the ones that I use most often. It's a Da Vinci and a Raphael. It's the, I like the long pointed one. And if you do a lot of brush strokes where you're doing kind of like a pencil, like you're holding a pencil, a long stroke like this, you're probably gonna get a fair amount of mileage out of a thinner brush. So that's all I'm gonna say about brushes right now. But just remember, you want a brush that's gonna keep a good tip. And if you use something called a Taclon, which is a synthetic, um, which is like the yellow bristles, the white bristles. I think I have another one. Yeah, Master's Touch here um, from Hobby Lobby. These are inexpensive and they're decent brushes, but they are synthetic. You can usually tell from the orange color. Um, they do a lot of kind of uh, synthetic sables now. And these are, as you can see, the tip here is pretty good. So if you want a cheaper brush, then you could go for something like this. Be aware that a synthetic brush is gonna curl at the tip a lot faster than a natural hair brush. That's the thing to remember about synthetics. They will not last as long. You may only be paying four bucks per brush instead of 18, but the $18 brush is gonna last you for years and the uh, $3 or $4 or $6 brush is gonna last you for maybe weeks, maybe, uh, depending on how much you paint. So I will go more into brushes at a later date, but, but brush with a very good tip. Keep that in mind. Now, really quick, Thin your paint is our next subject. Why, why you say, why on earth would I wanna do that? Isn't this paint thin enough? Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> so when you've just got regular full body paint, regular straight out of the bottle paints, we're gonna put my base next to it so we can see it a bit better. So look at this. I pull the paint through, see how long it's taking to close up again? If I pull the brush through the paint, a long time, it slowly moves. This is uh, straight out of the bottle paint. If I put even one drop of water in this, which is about a six to one ratio, and I mix it in, and then I pull the brush through. Oh, look, that closes up super fast. So I usually say base coat at about a six to one paint to water or a uh, up to a four to one paint to water. Although that's gonna give you a thinner base coat and you may need to put on two coats, but two thin coats is better than one globby regular coat. You remember how long that took to, pu to pull back together? Well, that's what it's gonna do on your model. And if I apply this blue to the rabbit's leg like that, the paint's gonna kind of just sit there in dabs. It's not gonna flow. But if I apply the paint to the leg with a thinned application, and then I continue working against that edge. The paint flows nicely together. It makes a beautiful, smooth, you can see how wet it is. Very smooth, solid base coat. 
And yes, you do want to use a pretty big brush, just like I talked about in our base coating video. Remember, I talked a bit about thinning paint there. Um, I'll be talking more about thinning paint pretty much with every video where we talk about a new technique. But you want that paint to flow together and be really smooth on the model. If you notice you put too much on, great, just grab a little bit extra off with your clean brush. But that's why you thin your paint for base coats is because otherwise you tend to get like dabs and and like chunks kind of and it won't be a smooth coating over the surface so that's why you thin when you're thinning further when you want to do details you may thin your paint this is four drops i usually start out at two to one when you thin your paint this much you may need to unload your brush a little bit more the more watery your paint is, the more it gets sucked up into your brush. So essentially, when you're working with thinner paint with more water in it, it means that you have to unload your brush a lot more because see how that paint is just creeping up that brush? So it's gonna take me maybe a little longer to unload my brush. And this brings us to tip number five, which is always unload your brush. Less paint on your brush is better than more. If you try to paint a detail when you've got a brush that's flooded with paint, versus trying to paint a detail when you have very little paint on the brush. So let's see here. Let's say I try to paint my initials with, with just like this. So all right, not too bad. Not too bad, I can do like that, right, okay? But maybe if I grab some of this paint and I unload my brush a lot, so dab, 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 so that it makes a really nice tip, now I can do a really thin, fine line. Why does this matter? Well, when you're trying to do stuff like eyeballs, folks, it matters a lot. Or belt buckles or any other small little detail, claws, teeth, any fine detail in a model. Oop, I blorfed a little bit there, but you get the idea. In general, much easier to do a thin, fine line. You can do little swoopies if you're trying to do anything like freehand, like on this guy the book, that's definitely going to take a lot of taking paint off your brush. If you want to be able to do fine stuff like this, or even the patterns and the expression on the little rat, none of this is super hard. I mean, it takes brush control, obviously, and maybe a little bit of, you know, scribbling and doodling ability. But more than anything, it's getting that extra paint off your brush. All right, guys, that is it. That is the top five tips for brand new painters. One, put your mini on a handle. Two, make sure you've got a lot of light, good light coming from both sides. Three, brush with a very good tip. Four, thin your paint, even for base coats. Just a little bit of water will make everything apply so much smoother and that will make everything look better from the get-go. And finally, five, very little paint on your brush. Make sure that even if you do dip a lot of your brush into the paint, and usually you don't want to dip more than half your brush in, make sure you unload after that because the less paint you have on your brush, the finer a line and the smaller a detail you're gonna be able to hit and the less of a chance you're gonna get of flooding an area with paint. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, I have a Patreon, patreon.com slash paintingbig. I also stream on Twitch on Saturdays on twitch.tv slash paintingbig at 3.30 USA Central Time. We usually work on a competition level model, so that's some fun and advanced stuff if you just want to see the magic. And I also answer questions at all levels during that time. Thank you everybody for watching, and we'll be back shortly with an additives video. Additives? What's that? Well, maybe this is jumping the gun a little bit, but I did want to cover it. So stay tuned everybody, another video coming up.